Against the Roads Podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. ATR Podcast, Gio Garcia here. I'm alongside Christian Mosqueda. Back for another episode 266. Episode 266, Heavyweights, Chris. We can start with some heavyweights too, man. Welcome back. Yeah, no, guys, welcome back. It's it's five week, Gio. We all we all had that question. Is, is this fight gonna get made? Everybody had those doubts. We're here, and it looks like it's gonna happen. Yeah, so obviously you're referring to the fight that you see there on your screen. You see the the title there, the headline. But you know, let's let's go to some other news that happened. We'll get into this fight. Let's go to some other news that uh, happened because some fights were announced. Uh, let me see if I can pull it up here for you guys. Uh, we've had been talking about this uh, for a while now. You see it there, five versus five tournament. Hey man, shout out to Turkey, Chris. Shout out to Turkey, Al Al Sheik, making a lot of good good fights happen. And this right here will be the headliner, Z Lei Zong, Deontay Wilder. Both men coming off of losses. Uh, we'll see how they bounce back, Chris. Yeah, no, like you said, Gio, like it is because of Turkey, it is because of that, you know, Saudi Arabia money that these two, you know, promotion companies are working together. Let's not kid ourselves, Gio. If it wasn't for that money, these guys would be over there playing politics and, you know, keeping their their fighters uh, in-house and only fighting each other. Again, money talks. And, you know, again, the best thing that's happened to boxing in the last two years is has been Turkey. Yeah, and, and you see here, uh, the beginning sentence says it took years for rival promoters, Frank Warren and Eddie Hearn, to even speak to each other. On that interview, uh, one of the Eddie Hearn interviews, he mentioned he had never even spoken to Frank Warren, you know, in his whole time in boxing. So uh, for them to now get together, you know, they had that rivalry over there in the UK for them to get together now and uh, put on this five versus five tournament. I mean, it's it's exciting because, you know, it's five versus five. All right. I'm sure both of these men are going to want to win this tournament bragging rights, you know, and. Here are the fights that we're going to get. Z Lei Zong with representing Queensberry, uh Deontay Wilder representing Matchroom, uh Philip Hergovich representing Matchroom versus Daniel Dubois representing Queensberry. That's a good matchup right there Hergovich. Uh 17 and 0, 14 KOs as you see it there. Uh here let me actually pull up the screen for you guys. There you go. Uh Hergovich 17-0, 14 KOs against Dubois. 
the wall let me see where does it say 20 and 2 19 ko's for daniel dubois so this is a good fight hergovic actually defeated z lay in a controversial decision but he's still undefeated representing croatia there uh what else we got here hamza giras representing queensberry versus austin amma williams representing matriman look she Ross, hopefully I'm saying that correctly. 19-0, 15 KOs against Ammo, who is 16-0, 11 KOs. That's going to be a good fight. Uh, we've been keeping track of Ammo's career. He's a good up-and-coming fighter, but ooh, that one's looking tough. 19-0, 15 KOs, his opponent. And Raymond Ford, representing Matchroom against Nick Ball, representing Queensberry. You know, Craig Richards also, Matchroom versus Willie. Hutchinson representing Queensberry. So we got some good matchups, man. Um, Saudi Arabia, I'm assuming the zone. Will it be pay-per-view? We'll see. But uh some good action there. Good, good fight announcements. Yeah, like you said, Gio, some of these fights, uh, I mean, they're 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 obviously very good. Uh usually you don't get, you know, undefeated fighters, young guys fighting each other. But I mean, if the money makes sense, these promoters are gonna capitalize on that and Again, five on five, bragging rights. Uh, you, like you said, you got two guys well known in Zong, and you know Wilder both on losing ends. Both, you know, I would say Wilder more needing this win more than than Zong. But hey, again, it's it's uh, the money, the money, the money's right, Gio. Yeah, we're getting some comments here saying, uh, "Why is Wilder being gifted a spot on a major card?" Says El Pachuco. Uh, Big Bro says Dubois, Hergovic, and Ford Vaughn are very 50 50 type of fights. Zhang versus Wilder is KO waiting to happen for sure. So, yeah, you know, as I said, both men coming off a loss. Uh, Z Laid uh, took a loss recently to Joseph Parker, surprisingly, you know, to a lot of us. He was able to hurt Parker in that fight. Couldn't finish him off. Parker proceeded to box box him out, Chris, for the, for the remainder of the fight, essentially. And uh, you would think that this is probably both men's last chance at a big purse, at a big fight. You know, uh, let, let, we'll take a look at their ages right now. But Zile, well, I think he's 40 now. Deontay Wilder, younger, but uh, he's taking some beatings, Chris. He's taking some beatings, uh, specifically by Tyson Fury. So uh, I think this is the last, this might be the last big fight. Uh, for the loser. Yeah, like you, like you mentioned, um, or like the, um, you know, like like it was mentioned in the post. Why is Wilder getting a shot again? Wilder was once upon a time, you know, a top three name in that heavyweight division. You know, since his losses to Tyson Fury and then losses here, um, back to back, it's almost like man, he's 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 flirting with that journeyman role, and again, it's just he's just not looking. He's, just, he's not looking like his destructive old self. Again, we're used to seeing Wilder lose uh, many early rounds, but then he somehow finds a way to win, and that hasn't been the case. So, you know, I think he mentioned something about the fire, you know, not being all there. He says it's it's coming back, but I don't know, Gio. I think he's just trying to sell the fight, and of course, you know, he has to try to capitalize, you know, with so much money on the table, you know, at the tail end of his career. But, yeah, again, it's... The loser, and more so Wilder, if he loses one more time, I do not see him being marketable, just damaged goods, pretty much just, you know, just a guy that you use to to, to move fighters up. Yeah, man, this is a good card. I'm sure we'll be speaking about this in months to come. Let me see. Does it have a, a date here? Hmm. We'll see. We'll see. But, um... Yeah, this this just got announced, so we'll be, as I said, talking about it. And of course, you know the other fight that was announced as well, Arthur Betterbeev, thirty nine years old, Chris. I think a lot of people will be paying attention to that number right there. But he is twenty and zero, and he does have twenty knockouts. And you see it there, Dimitri Bebel, twenty two and zero. Half of his fights have ended in a KO. You know the the complete contrast you can say from from arthur the power puncher uh you know uh bevo more of a pure boxer you can say 
whoa, I don't know what happened there, but uh, let me take that screen off. But Chris, uh, it's official. You know, we haven't talked about it much. We wanted to wait until it was official, but Turkey does it again. Yeah, no, again, the best thing that's happened to, to boxing again the last year, year and a half has been this guy Turkey because he's making, you know, guys that, like you said, have never talked to each other, never entertained a fight. Again, when the money is there, guys like Bebo, Betri, we're like, hey, you know, we're prize fighters. This is why we take a chance. At the end of the day, if one of us loses, at least we're getting the best payday of our careers. And yes, this is the fight that everybody wants to see. Gio, you, me, everybody in that comment section. It's one of the, one of those dream fights where you you get the two best guys, of course, because Bebo did beat Canelo. It gives it a little bit more incentive, you know. Uh, again, these are the two best fighters at 175. Differing styles, both undefeated. Uh, one guy who's a, a little bit older, but he's just a, such a destructive force and a guy that can, you know, box the hat off of anybody. So, yeah, man, this one is, this one might be the fight of the year and it might challenge Usyk and Tyson Fury for, you know, pound for pound status. Yeah, we'll get into that because, look, Tyson Fury, obviously, Alexander Usyk's coming up soon, May 18th. We're about a, a month away. You know, these are two high profile fights and I'm still I'm still debating. I can't decide which one is the, the higher profile one. Obviously, the heavyweights, usually the sexier division. You know, that's the one that people are looking at. That's the one that people say, you know, the the current state of the heavyweight division usually kind of determines the current state of boxing, you know, so all eyes on the heavyweights. But this fight right here, man, we got two Russians to probably top five top six top seven whatever you want to call it pound for pound fighters the two best at 175 pounds and look arthur better is 39 as i said dimitri bivol 33 both men have a total of 42 fights combined chris so you know these guys you know obviously good amateur experience don't have too many miles on their bodies in the pro rank so I think they're still, they're both in their primes. And that's rare to see in today's game, man. Two top guys in their primes, number one versus number two in the division. You know, we don't get to see that very often. We we obviously saw another undisputed bout recently, you know, Errol Spence versus Terrence Crawford. Uh, probably, not probably, for sure it was past due. You know, it was past uh the the time that we wanted to see it obviously mayweather pacquiao the biggest example of that but look this fight better be a bevel both men in their prime same with tyson fury and alexander usik so uh is exciting exciting news and as i said turkey does it again man i'm sure we're going to be discussing this fight in weeks to come june 1st is the official day saudi arabia let me ask you, Gio, what was your initial reaction when you saw that it was official, like when you saw these two guys facing off? What 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 came to mind? I'm sorry, can you can you repeat that, Chris? What was what came to mind when you as a fight fan when you finally saw that it was official and that these guys are doing a face off? Like what was your initial reaction to, to that? It's happening. It's happening. You know, we always hear a ton of rumors, but uh it's always a relief once it's official and you know Hopefully, knock on wood, everything goes well. You know that Tyson Fury, Alexander Usyk got pushed back a little bit. Um, but it's happening after all. You know, things happen. Um, we just want to see the, the the best get it on. And these two are, are the best at 175 pounds. So I was relieved. But, hey, I didn't, I didn't doubt my boy, my boy Turkey, man. I knew he was going to make it happen. <laughs> the, the interesting about this fight is of course when you think of heavyweights like you said Gio that's that's what determines the state of boxing uh but coincidentally you know the heavyweights they're going through are the two best ones right now you know they they're employing more of a, a boxing style less these are probably two of the most talented heavyweights since Muhammad Ali so the fact that this light heavyweight match is more you know fan friendly for the casual I think that's what I think that's what is gonna you know have honors for fight of the year in my opinion uh but again it's it's because of better beef style like you said Gio. he he may be 39 but he's still very fresh 
he, you know, has broken down every single one of his opponents. So he hasn't had to go, you know, the distance. He, you know, his best defense is his offense. So he hasn't, you know, taken a lot of damage. Bebo, for his part, you know, just outboxes, you know, even the likes of Canelo, you know. So he hasn't taken too much damage either. So, again, this is I, – I feel that fight's going to be very tense. You know, it, obviously you're going to see people employ a, his boxing style. And we've seen what uh, Betterby has done to, you know, boxing style fighters, you know, in Bozdik. People's a different animal. But, again, it's so enticing. It's so intriguing. It's almost a 50-50 fight. I'm sure some people have it 55-45. But, again, it's so intriguing. Uh, and, again, it pins two Russians, two stable mates, not, well, two country mates. And, again, I, I, I just can't wait to see that fight. Yeah, and, and Big Bro's right. Actually, that 5-on-5 five -five tournament is on the undercard of this this fight, uh, June 1st. And uh, he says, I heard the 5 versus 5 is going to be on pay-per-view on the zone and better be a Bebo is going to be free on ESPN plus. Yeah. I had read that as well. So, wow. um, yeah, I think the quote unquote undercard is pay-per-view and then, um, the main event is going to be uh quote unquote free. You got to subscribe to ESPN plus, but, uh, that's a good investment. Chris, I've, I've said it. I have ESPN plus. I don't know how much I pay like $8. I think a month I get to watch my European football. I get to watch my boxing uh i think it's a good deal but hey they're not paying us so this is not an ad but yeah man look i man we're gonna have so much to say about this fight we got people already here giving our predictions uh El pachuco says i got better bf late ko man i i saw the the face to face there you have it better be if man he he's a scary dude man let me tell you this uh, I don't know if you guys got the same sentiment out of this. Uh, I just read what they had. They said during this press conference, I didn't, I didn't watch the video, but it, it's to me, it seems a little bit like maybe Bevo is happy to be there. He's been waiting for this chance, but better be have just said, Hey, I wanted the belts. He has a belt. This is just another fight. And I believe him, man. This guy's scary. 20 wins, 20 KOs. I don't know if there's anybody out there who can survive against this guy 12 rounds. Yeah. I, I think when they did the face-off, obviously you read people's comments, you read the fight fans, you know, how they read people's body language. I don't want to say that fighters are afraid to fight because, you know, that's if that were true, they wouldn't have gone into the sport. But, you know, that face-off made me feel like Better B wanted that fight. He was throwing, you know, verbal jabs, saying, you know, those guys don't want the fight. I, I've been asking for that fight forever, yeah. and you kind of just saw people laugh it off. So that's a little telling. Take take it how you how, how you may. But, yeah, I think Bebo is well aware who he has in front of him. I'm sure, you know... Come climbing up the ranks, people, you know, knew about Better Beep as as he is older. So I'm I'm sure there's I'm sure there's you know some I don't want to say some fear, but some caution and respect from people people's side. He knows he's up against a, a destroyer in Better Beep, or else they would have fought maybe two three years ago. So you know, but again, I think if anybody has the style to 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 try to get a decision, it's it's Beeble. Any other boxer that has that, you know, that size and that b b boxing uh, acumen is guys like, like Usyk and Fury, which are who are much bigger. So, if there's anybody in and around division, it, it's Bebo. But again, it's a very, very tough ask. Uh, you know, I, I feel like that fight between Better Bebo and Callum Smith said a lot. Callum Smith was looking very good in that new weight. Obviously, we know his size, and you know he, you know, lasted the distance with Canelo. So. The fact that Betrabee broke him down, I was like, man, I feel like Betrabee can break anybody down. So, yeah, let me know your thoughts, Gio. No, I agree. I think the only thing that can stop Betrabee is his age. You know, 39 years old. But as I said, he, he doesn't have a lot of miles, you know, in the pro ranks. Oh, uh, man, it, it's going to be tough. El Pachuco says, I was surprised to see that B-Roll looks slightly bigger than Betrabee. Yeah, he's taller. He's taller for sure. Um, uh, but 
you know, another thing that Better BF said was, hey, ask them why this fight hadn't happened earlier. You know, so as you said, he's throwing little jabs. We saw when when they were face to face. Uh, I think it was last year when I don't know where they were at some event and the cameras got them and Better BF looked like he was ready to go. Bevo a little more friendly, you know, Better BF was just like, man, I want this. I want this belt. So it's going to be very, very uh exciting you know june 1st we're not that far away so i'm excited for it i might be more excited for this one than fury Usyk, man but hey we'll, we'll have time to discuss and dissect chris yeah again i'm just as a fight fan i'm just excited that this one is officially official you know the two best light heavyweights you know, one has been destroying everybody via knockout. The other guy beat the face of boxing in Canelo in a very disciplined fight. I expect nothing less than this one. But, man, there's a reason why even the face of boxing Canelo did not want no business with Better Beef. Yeah, I mean, man, hey, we'll have we'll have a lot to say, Chris, in the coming weeks. But Better be Beevil official June 1st in Saudi Arabia and that undercard that five versus five tournament man hey they're they're making it happen turkey said back in the day 70s 80s boxing was the number one sport in the world right when he was growing up he wants to bring it back to that so this is a good a good step in the right direction hopefully boxing fans get behind it you know as i said heavyweight division sexier names Fury Usyk. Uh, more of the mainstream know those guys but you're a, if you're a boxing fan this is the fight this is the type of fights that you nerd out about man this is what you get excited for so hopefully the boxing fan supports it you know uh going back to that other undisputed bout that i mentioned earlier i think that one sold like 600k the spence crawford like it, it didn't do very good in the pay-per-view uh uh in the pay-per-view numbers, you know, as a fight of that magnitude should. Two undefeated fighters, undisputed, the best welterweight of this era. You know, I feel like the boxing fan didn't get behind it. So hopefully this receives more support and they got a, a great undercard to to help sell that fight as well. Yeah, I think you, you said it, Gio. Um, I mean, just the fact that this fight is not on what you call pay-per-view where you pay... 89.99 you know you it's almost a gift to us to us uh you know boxing fans uh it's on espn plus you, you know that basic subscription but you're gonna get like a fight of the year in my opinion kind of fight so again you you pin two pound for pound fighters two undefeated champions you know both vying to be you know the number one guy at that division and then go up the rank so again you know fight Fans that have ESPN, ESPN Plus, I get to see this. Man, they're going to get in for a treat. Again, these are the kind of fights that bring back, you know, the mainstream fan, you know, back into boxing. So, again, shout out to Turkey for making this happen. Yeah. All right. Let's see what we got next here. Let's go to some comments real quickly before we move on. Big Bro says, uh, this fight don't need any goofiness and shenanigans. We already know it's business with both. And it's a true 50-50 fight. El Pachuco uh, promoting the Jose Ramirez fight. And also Virgil on the card. That's April 27. Let me tell you this. Oh, Chris went. Dark over there. Oh, man. What's going on over here? <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> this, guy's making, light back on. this guy's making Let's his... Light. <laughs> <laughs> He's making his ring entrance or something. Something's going on. We're going to hear the stone cold glass breaking in the background right now. <laughs> Go. All right, but hey, let me tell you this though, man. That Fresno card, it's cool, but I think there's two knockouts. I think Jose Ramirez and Virgil should get the KOs. Stay busy fights, in my opinion. They take it to Northern Cali. I mean, I, I'm not too excited about it, but we'll we'll talk about it. We'll we'll talk about that fight. Uh what do we have next? Let me look, let me take a look at what we have next because look, we do have obviously some action going on this saturday april 20th and we're gonna get straight into it chris we're gonna get it straight into it you see there uh devin haney undefeated 
31 and 0, 15 knockouts, 25 years old. He'll be facing Ryan Garcia, who has his lone defeat to Tank Davis. He got stopped in that one. Quit. Let's call it what it is. He quit. 24 and 1, 20 knockouts, 25 years old as well. This fight is going down at 140 pounds. Chris, you all right over there? Fix your lighting. You're it's like, like a club out here. glowing in the dark right now. Let's, let's get some. Let's get some. Look, this guy. Let, let's get some white or yellow light or something, man. Come on. Let's go. I got the white one on. I love it. Almost. All right. Well, that does not look white, Chris. That looks purple. But um, yeah, let, let's go to the. Did we post a poll? I don't think we posted a poll, but I can post one right now. Um, a lot of people didn't think this fight was going to happen. Chris, you're still purple, so I'm not going to put you on the screen until you turn normal. Um, a lot of people didn't think this fight was going to happen. But it's here. Saturday, April 20th. We're a few days away. Uh, Ryan Garcia actually looks like he's in good shape. Uh, physically, a lot of people questioning his mental. Uh, Devin Haney always looks like he's in good shape. But let's get you guys' thoughts on this fight. I don't know if I'm excited enough to pay for it. Uh, I'm I'm gonna watch. I'm gonna watch, but uh, I'm not in a hurry to to pay the eighty, ninety dollars or whatever it's gonna be, Chris. Yeah, no. Again, um, you know, I think it's it's a. Everybody was waiting for this fight to get made, you know, and and everybody had their doubts whether Ryan, with the state of mind that he was in, if he was going to even make it. So no, I think that the number one win is a hey, he he's here, you know, he did the face off in New York. They had that little shove, so that 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 fight is here. The excitement level is not the greatest, you know. You you seen the odds, Geo? Um, Devin Haney is a huge favorite, so a lot of people are discounting Ryan. You know, all these theatrics, all this, you know. All this clown show that's going on behind the scenes is, is making people think he he's just not here. Um, Devin Henney's going to mop the floor with him. So the ticket sales have not been doing great from what we're hearing. So again, I think the only win right now is that this event is going on with a uh, Ryan Garcia, a, a distracted, a, you know, off the rails, a Ryan Garcia. But uh, yeah, the, the, it's we're here. And it's almost like just just let's just get what we can, which is you know, it's 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 unfortunate because we wanted it to feel like it's a close to a 50-50 fight. And again, it's it just feels like Ryan's um, you know, just just the stuff going on uh mentally with Ryan is 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 not good for, for boxing. So you mentioned ticket sales, man. Let's take a look at that because look, I, I was curious, you know, I'm as I said, there's always rumors, but you know. I'm I'm at the website right now, the Barclays website. That's where this fight is going to be, New York. And let's go ahead and click on it and, and see what pops up, man. All right. Let's put buy tickets. All right. It's taking me to the Ticketmaster website. And, and let's see. Look, there's a whole lot of blue there, Chris. I know you guys can see it on your screen if you guys are watching on YouTube. A whole lot of tickets available. As you guys can see, the cheapest ticket here says two hundred forty-three dollars, one hundred eighty-seven over here. Let's see if that's the cheapest. One hundred eighty-seven. It seems like one hundred eighty-seven is the cheapest ticket. Still, a whole lot of tickets. None of the sections are grayed out. So, yeah, it seems like the rumors are true. Look, it tells you how many tickets are available. Ninety-eight right there, ringside. Ninety-nine right next to there. 13 there. I mean, it, it looks like it's not selling, man. Who do you blame for this? Who do you blame for this? Because I have a theory on this. Chris over there still messing with his light. Uh, let's see what you look like now. You still looking a little, a little bluish. We'll let you All right, go for, go for it. But let let's get you guys' thoughts on this. Big bro saying, um. If the pay-per-view and live gate flops, this is a major L for Haney. Even if he wins, he'll have no leverage for bigger fights against Tank and Shakur. Her, I heard it was overpriced. Uh, Ryan's going to beat that ass and he's still going to get robbed. Uh, Big Bro says, 
Haney wins 11 to 1. Uh, Haney might drop him, but doesn't have the killer instinct. Uh, yeah, man. What do you think, Chris? What do you think? I think the person that's to blame is it's it's a little bit of both. Uh, obviously, um, when you're Ryan Garcia and you're in charge of, you know, kind of ha- handling this promotion, if you're the only one dancing, and your dance moves are all off the walls with social media distraction, with women, with horniness, then it's it's your fault. But again, you're the only one that's promoting this fight, so the blame also has to fall on Devin Haney, who. You know, let's 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 just be real. He's not the most entertaining outside of that squared circle. You know, he doesn't bring a lot of trash talking. He it's I think the shove was, you know, one of the things that we seen the most out of him. But outside of that, very quiet, very introverted guy. Yes, it's good for his boxing and he's going to keep winning, but he's not going to be entertaining or, or, you know, pushing, promoting, getting the, the casual fan excited. So. It's it's I, I would blame both, but because you know Ryan is the only one dancing with all this mental toughness, I you know I I I got I got to I got to put a lot of the blame on 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 David Haney just letting Ryan you know take the promotion uh, gig all to himself. All right, so I'm gonna post a poll right now, uh, basically who you got Saturday Haney or Garcia. You guys can go vote. I'll pull it up on your screens in a moment, but. Let me tell you this, man. Devin Haney is so boring, Chris. That guy is so boring. I can't decide if he's more boring in the ring or outside of it. Zero trash talk. Uh, He tries to trash talk, but he's no good at it. He's just a boring guy. He's hard to like. I, I, I know. I'm pretty sure you saw that video of him trying to read something. Go check out this fight at Dave and Buster's or something. This guy was stumbling and fumbling with two sentences. Chris, stop messing with your light, please. Come on. You're hurting people's eyes now. Pick a good one. Come on. That's not a good one, by the way. Anyway, this guy stumbling and fumbling with two sentences. Ryan Garcia making fun of him, saying you can't you can't read. And you're like Floyd. And people in the comment section was writing, oh, man, I'm trying to like this guy, but it's so hard. I mean, we'll see how, how this does. I don't think they will announce any of the the numbers or anything is the zone. They don't typically do that, but um, we'll see. We'll see if they can even get people in there, man. This guy, I think he's boring. More, probably more so outside of the ring. Inside the ring, he's very good. He's a very good boxer. Very good at dis- distance. Very good at timing. I think he wins a unanimous. Chris, I'm gonna go ahead and drop my decision. I think he can get caught too. Chin maybe a little, a little shaky. I hope Ryan Garcia can catch him, but, you know, Ryan Garcia isn't the most accurate puncher out there. He gets a little wild, so I think Haney can easily win 10 rounds, but we'll see if Ryan can do anything. I know Dem Haney is going to be expecting that left hook, so we'll see if Ryan could even uh, land it. I think Haney's going to make it boring per usual, and he's going to have a boring post-fight speech, and then he's going to have a boring post-fight press conference, and... I don't think this is going to sell. He's just a boring guy. And I think it's going to be a boring fight. Hey, uh, yeah, no, I think the, the easy, the, the easy bet to make is Haney by decision. Obviously we know that he doesn't have the, the power to, to knock anybody out. I think it was very surprising that he was able to knock down Ruguru last fight. So, you know, having that's, that's, that's as good as it gets in my opinion for, for Devin Haney's power. So a decision, I'm locking my mine in as well. Devin Haney by decision. You mentioned Ryan Garcia's best, you know, chances to knock him out, hurt him early. The fight that comes to mind is Shane Mosley when he hurt Floyd Mayweather. You know, but we saw what Mayweather did. He regrouped. He was able to take over, and I see something like that happening. Uh, I I I can see Ryan hurting Devin Haney. We have seen Devin Haney, you know, kind of shiny, kind of suspect when it comes to that, but. I see him also regrouping. We saw him survive a master boxer in Lomachenko in that round nine. He was just taking, eating shots left and right, and that's by a master boxer. And he's he was still able to weather the storm and, in my opinion, win that last round. So if he can survive that, in my opinion, he's going to survive Ryan, unless Ryan just lands something so clean, so flush, that it, it knocks Devin Haney out. But again, I don't see that happening. 
Ryan Garcia is no Shane Mosley. Uh, and Devin Haney is a little bit closer to a Mayweather in, in that he will find a way to weather that storm and just, again, clean house, win, in my opinion, you know, just as easily as he beat Ruguru. So Devin Haney by decision. And I guess I agree. It will be a very boring <laughs> post-fight presser. And Devin Haney's just going to get the job done. And that's all she wrote. All right, let's go to some comments here. Uh, let's see. Haney tries to play nice and then tries to be the bad guy. He doesn't know who he is. Uh, Patruco says Haney via wins via excessive hugging. <laughs> and look, I just posted up the poll. We got six votes at the moment. Um, you see my vote there going for Devin Haney. Let me refresh it and see if we got any other votes. Eight votes now. This poll just went up. We got some 38% right now for Ryan. So we'll see. This POTUS poll is going to be up if you guys want to open it on the new tab. You guys can go ahead and vote. We'll check the results um, at the end of the podcast. Chris still playing with his Christmas lights over there. Can't figure it out. Oh, man. Somebody somebody sent him some help. Send the guy some help. But uh, yeah, man, look, I don't have much on this. Let's just kind of see how they're going into this fight. Ryan Garcia. Uh, last time out, defeated Oscar Duarte. He implemented the famous shoulder roll. Wasn't pretty, but he got it done. He got a KO victory in the 8th. That was in December. December uh, 2nd of 2023. Uh, of course, that fight last April, April 22. He was defeated by, stopped by, Tank Davis in the seventh. Uh, before that, he stopped Fortuna. He beat Tego. He stopped Luke Campbell. I mean, he has some some decent wins. Nothing impressive. Uh, on the other hand, you know, we we can criticize Haney all we want. That he's boring. Uh, that nobody wants to watch this guy. Can't sell out a family picnic. But hey, look, he's got some good wins at least on paper. Regis, I think his best win. The best win of his pro career. He got that title at uh, 140 pounds. That was last December as well. Unanimous. Was able to drop Regis, as you mentioned. On paper, he got the Lomachenko win. I still think he lost. But hey, it looks good on paper. That was in May of 2023. And before that, Cambosos, who's probably the worst undisputed champion of all time. Uh, he's, he's a funny guy. I like his personality. I just don't think he's that great of a fighter but he defeated him in australia before that joseph diaz uh jorge linares so you know uh -oh, haney obviously has all that momentum from that regis win on the other hand brian trying to find himself he has Derek james now in his corner uh as i said I, I don't expect much a lot of a lot of foolery going around going on uh during that training camp i personally think it's all it's all just trolling, but we'll see, man. We'll see. As I said, Ryan looks like he's in he's in very good shape. He's the only man. Look, Devin Haney. Don't get me started, man. Devin Haney should be lucky he's getting forty five percent. Chris, Bill Haney, Oscar De Loya said they agreed to a fifty five forty five split. Not sure how Haney's getting forty forty five percent. This guy did like one percent of the selling for this fight, man. He should be lucky. To be getting 45%. Ryan Garcia did all, all the theatrics, all the selling of this fight. Settled at 55. Hey, I whatever. I'm not mad at it, but uh Haney, just do something in the ring, man. Enter entertain us for once. Yeah, I was gonna say, Gio, like, yeah, again, no disrespect to Haney. He's an excellent fighter. He's got a you know a great boxing style. Um, obviously, it's a little bit um tailored after Mayweather where you kind of just pick your shots. You know, you don't throw, you know, too many combinations to not get caught, which is something that Mayweather did. You know, just you just pick your shots. So obviously when we think of Mayweather, Mayweather was a trash talker. He did, you know, entertain, whether it was from, you know, just talking smack to people, you know, flaunting his 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 jewelry. So in your opinion, Joe, what what can a Devin Haney do to be more entertaining? I mean, show some power. I mean, no one's calling the Regis Progress fight boring. He was able to drop him. 
you know so show us some power man let's see if 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 that was just a fluke or if that was for real let's see if that was oh you were draining yourself at 135 so now you're gonna show us your real power at 140 hurt ryan garcia hurt him hurt him to the body to the head i don't care hurt him drop him and i think people will be entertained you know i don't think he gets a knockout can't remember the last time he got one of those but hey knock somebody down man yeah for for me i think the outside outside theatrics i think he's got to do something something outside of course you can't be you can't you know do the whole mayweather thing because devin Haney isn't a nicer guy you know he's very proper you know but but you know do some stuff that i saw in in that first la presser where you know you're you're talking a little bit of smack you're you're getting you know the crowd going uh do a little bit more of that the thing for me in my opinion is he gets very quiet when there's no pressers you know obviously we live in a social media world and people are going to say you know stay focused yada 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 but again you can't let ryan do all this promotion on himself you got get on you gotta get on social media and, and and you know shoot some stuff back say some stuff back you know make fun of ryan with all this craziness i don't know how I'm, i haven't seen too much of that i'm i'm sure he's put some videos here and there but it's gotta be a little bit more again it's you can't let this guy you know just take over the whole promotion with with uh the stuff we've been seeing so again you know find find a way to 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 get out there more when it comes to social media trash talking entertainment and and the like el pachuco said haney couldn't sell free tickets <laughs> that's a good one chris found himself yeah, no, good job bro <laughs> again jill there's uh, a lot of, of media applying but again yeah like you said these tickets are not selling um bill haney has been he's he's kind of like an eddie hearns where he's in the camera more than than set fighters and you know and trying to sell the fight we saw the trash talking back and forth, you know, between him and uh and Team Garcia. But um, yeah, again, um, no disrespect to Devin Haney inside the ring. He's an excellent fighter, in my opinion, lacking a little bit of power, but you can't do anything about that. But it's about, you know, just if you're lacking on the entertainment side, you gotta do it inside the ring. Like you said, when it comes to power, throw combinations, you know, take some risks. Again, I know you don't want to do that against a guy like Ryan Garcia, you know, that his best chance is a knockout or a TKO. So Again, you just have to take risks and, you know, hope it pays off. Yeah, I agree. I don't think he he takes any against a guy like Ryan who has that quick, you know, left hook, especially, you know, that that quick left hook. Obviously, he got, he's got quick hands. So, yeah, I think he plays it safe. But we'll see, man. We'll see what Devin we get. We know what Ryan we're going to get. He, he only knows how to fight one way. So, uh and it seems like Haney only knows how to fight one way as well. He showed us a little bit more against Pro Grade, but um, I wouldn't hold my breath, man. Uh, Pachuco, once again, uh, that that was a funny comment, man. Shout out to you. Haney couldn't sell. Let me pin that. Let me see if I can pin that. Couldn't sell free tickets. Oh, man. Let me. I'll do it right now. But um, Pachuco also says Haney entered the Progress fight weighing 165 pounds. Yeah, I mean... That's why, as well, I don't give him too much credit for the Loma fight. I thought Loma won, but look, I, I don't know how many pounds Haney, you know, outweighed uh, Loma in that fight by. So, you know, a lot of people want to give him credit for that. Nah, I don't know. Nah, that's an asterisk to me, Chris. That's an asterisk. But um, it, another comment here, if I was Haney, I would have talked so much-ish about Ryan so much ammo smh yeah i feel like bill has been doing a lot of talking but when doesn't he talk you know the, the build-up has been decent chris i think it has been constant from that moment you were there in downtown la brian garcia came out with 50 women he came out on a horse people were talking about it i feel like ever since that week it's been non-stop oh what is ryan up to now oh another instagram post Oh, now he's going into conspiracy theories. Oh, now he's tweeting. Oh, will he fight? Oh, look, he's actually in shape. Oh, he's 140 something pounds a couple of weeks away from the fight. Oh, look, now he looks ready. And today you saw the the shove slash face grab, you know, a lot of people saying, "Oh, now Ryan is in Devin's in Devin's head." You know, now Devin is reacting to the trash talk. So, um I feel like the build up has been good. I don't know if 
like I said, I don't know even then if that's enough to 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 sell close to a milli. You know, Oscar de la Hoya said this was that he thinks this was gonna do better than the Tank Davis fight. We'll see. I highly doubt it. And I would blame Devin Haney again. <laughs> I gotta ask you, Gio. Obviously, we know part of the reason that the tickets are not selling is, you know, you mentioned maybe Damian Haney, not the most exciting fighter, uh, you know, to 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 promote a main event around uh, Ryan Garcia. Obviously, the Ryan Garcia shenanigans uh, outside of that square circle, not not motivating many fans to to purchase tickets because obviously the, you know, Damian Haney is a favorite right now. I believe minus 900 uh, current odds. Um, I got to ask you, do you think that the fight is happening in New York is another reason? Another big reason why the tickets are not selling, in your opinion? Oh, yeah. I think that's a big fumble, man. I know Oscar tried to say, oh, you know, the Mecca. I mean, the the former Mecca. I mean, Vegas is a spot now. And guess, guess what number two is? Saudi Arabia. You know, ain't nobody going to New York to, especially the Barclays. If you're going to MSG, then... Then, yeah, there ain't nobody saying, oh, man, I want to go to the Barclays Center, you know. So um, I think Oscar was lying to himself. But, uh, I mean, two guys from California and you and you schedule the fight across the country. I mean, makes zero sense. You know, at least here, all their family and friends, you know, would be able to go to the fight easily. And you could have done it up in the Bay. You could have done it in, in L.A and done it in san diego you would have got a lot of people but instead six six hour flight away i mean you shoot yourself in the foot so yeah i think definitely that's one of the big reasons i don't care what oscar said oh this is new york the mecca oh if you can make it here you can make it anywhere sounds cute but you're not selling tickets yeah um and of course Gio, like we said uh devin any is the is you know, the overwhelming favorite, you picked them, I picked them to go decision. How how big would it be if Ryan Garcia were to to win either by decision or by by stoppage? Uh it'll be huge. It'll be huge because now you have a title. Now look, now it's fifty nine forty one for Ryan, twenty seven for Haney, sorry. Fifty nine in favor of Haney, forty one. In favor of of Garcia, uh, twenty seven voters so far. So you guys go cast your votes if you haven't done so already. Um, but yeah, this will be huge for Ryan because look, he's gonna sell regardless. You know, he, there's still fights out there for him even if he loses. Um, I don't know if people will continue to to consider him. You know, at that championship level, elite. I don't think many people do already, but. I think if he loses, definitely that's out of the picture. You know, Ryan's just going to be probably to me another AB, another guy who sells regardless of who they fight. But if he wins, I think it does the complete opposite. Now you have to take him seriously. Now he has a belt. But at the same time, now he's going to have to probably face more pressure to fight the other champions. The other champions are Delfimo Lopez, right? I think Delfimo has a belt at 140. Pitbull, Cruz, and Sobriel Matias. So, uh, yeah, I think for the good of boxing, I think if the boxing gods wanted or favored either Garcia or Haney, I think hands down you want Garcia to win. That's the moneymaker. Haney's not selling anything. I don't care who he fights. Yeah, I I agree. If If Ryan were to win... I think it almost, I don't want to say it races, but it almost, obviously, people are, are we're hearing the comparisons to Kanye West, the cause of mental health. I think it almost races, like, all that. Everything he did, oh. yeah, it goes away. And it's almost like he's labeled a genius, like, oh, my God, he. It worked. That's what you're going to say. It to make it one way. Yeah. So, so that's, that's, that's what I think happens, obviously, like you said, the title being in a, in a star's name and somebody marketable that's that's huge and it will open doors for the other stars in that division um having said that i don't think that happens which poses my next question Gio. if you know ryan garcia were to lose and lose you know let's say in a route 
uh, out box, loses every single round, just not focused. Um, do you think, do you feel we should be, you know, or the, or the people around him should be taking into account his mental health, his, his mental state? Now, that's a tough one because I think he was going to lose regardless whether he was doing this stuff or not. You know, to me, it's just fight Roley. I know Oscar De Loya said, no, we're not fighting Roley. He was making fun of Roley when Roley got stopped. But I think that's a fight to make. I think they should have made that fight. I think Roley ended up pulling out or whatever and fighting Cruz instead, which bit him in the ass. But uh, I don't know. I don't know. I think that's a question for the people who are close to him. Obviously, we are on the outside looking in. We don't know much. I think, you know, where you see on the internet i think most of it is not real but well, well i don't know i think he he loses this fight regardless whether he was a thousand percent locked in or whether he he was doing what he's doing now so i don't know that's that's a tough one i don't know do you have an answer to that one yeah for me i, I feel like we're gonna get a lot of answers uh you know come uh come the 20th and then after if Ryan Garcia just seems out of it, just seems, you know, defeated. If a guy like Devin Haney with that style can can frustrate you. If you're losing every single round and you're not landing anything, you can get something. I don't wanna, I don't wanna, you know, you know, play uh play uh predictor here, but hey, I, I can see Ryan, you know, saying no mas. He's he has quit before in a sense because of a body shot if he's Damn. so frustrated that he's not letting anything on Devin Haney and if his mental state is not there and in, he's in his head and you know everything comes out in that moment I can see him you know just just quitting you know and again I think that will tell us whether you know he really is fit to be in in the sport or or you know his ego got the best of him so we'll see what happens on on on, on Saturday Again, we I agree with you. I believe it's going to be a decision. Uh, De Devin Haney's favor. I just see Ryan Garcia just not mentally there. I think physically he's trying to will himself and convince himself that he's there. But the antics on social media has just been has been. I don't think I've ever seen anything this 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 crazy in my opinion, Gio. Yeah, Rudy Gomez over here commenting. He's saying Garcia. He's commenting on the polls. Fifty fifty now. Thirty eight votes. So. Racking up the votes there, Ryan. But, um, yeah, man, we'll, we'll see. This is going to be very interesting. Like I said, I don't know if I'm excited, uh, as excited for this to the point where I want to pay. But I guess this this is a question for both of us. How excited are you from for this fight on a scale of 1 to 10? So I'm going to New York, so I'm excited because of that. Uh, oh, are you going to be there? I'm at, yeah, but oh, I'm at look a at that. seven. I didn't know this. All right, I'm at a seven just because I, I, it's it's more like I know what's going to happen. I guess in my opinion, but it's like, what kind of Ryan Garcia are we going to see? Is is it all going to come out and just you know, is he going to is he going to shit the bed in a sense, or is like what are, or is he going to make a fool of all of us? Which I don't think. But uh, again, I'm just I'm 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 curious to see and what what ryan garcia is going to show up if it's something where he lands big punches and and, and shocks us that'd be that'd be crazy but uh yeah i think i'm more excited just to just to see everything that we see on social media how it how it, it shows up on a, on a boxing ring but not too excited about you know the unknown if you know who's gonna win we i, I think we know who's gonna win i would say i'm a let's say like a six uh, uh it's kind of been going up and down but it, i think it's stayed around that number um i think for garcia he can save you know he can save face he can save his career he can save his paydays whatever you want to call it by busting the chavez jr chris against Manavilla martinez you know you could lose every round but if you hurt the guy you drop him you can say hey i almost had him you know i almost had him you know i almost knocked him out you know that was probably uh, Julio Cesar Chavez Jr.'s career highlight, you know, I almost had Maravilla, even though he got pummeled for the other, you know, 12 and a half rounds, you know. Um, so I think if Ryan can hurt Haney, make him do the stanky leg maybe at the end of a round or something, you know, 
he can bring that up after like hey man i almost stopped this guy whatever we're expecting him to lose regardless so but i think if he can hurt devin take him to deep waters and you know i think there's still you know those big fights for him you know i'm not sure where he goes from here maybe pitbull i think is the more favorable matchup you know the smaller guy at 140 tank he already lost to but i can see that happening again just because tank is not fighting any tough opponents he's fighting frank martin uh seems yeah. like soon uh benavides on the undercard you know i don't see tank in a rush to fight any of the top guys so i can see that rematch with ryan happening before i see a pitbull rematch with tank honestly you get more money le probably the the ryan's probably less dangerous than pitbull at this point so you know i think brian still gets a lot of paydays but you know we'll see we'll see we'll be back next tuesday to break it all down i'm still not too excited for it i'm not paying for it i don't think i am but you know we'll be watching and we'll see what happens i don't even know who's on the undercard besides ryan doing all his things i haven't even really heard much you know f about this whole event um so we'll we'll see we'll see how it does yeah again it's 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 been it's been it's been a bit of a circus with the one man show building up to this fight um again we kind of know what to expect but again you never know until the fight happens Again, uh, Ryan doesn't have power to to stun Devin Haney, whether he lands it or not. We're, we're just going to have to wait and see. Um, but again, April 20th, Devin Haney versus Ryan Garcia. One of the things I do have to say about these two guys is Devin Haney, even though, like you said, he's not the most exciting, entertaining outside the square circle. He does fight, you know, in and around all those names. He followed Machenko. You, you and me differ in that fight, but we do admit it was a competitive fight. Um, he routed. Rougarou, who I thought he was going to have a little bit more trouble with, he shocked us when he when he dropped him. So, you know, it, uh, Devin Haney has been fighting all the names. Ryan Garcia has been fighting the names. You know, starting with with the tanks, uh, and again, he's trying to get some credibility. Not doing it outside of that square circle, but we'll see if he musters, like you said, something to kind of erase this this bad taste that he's left in the fight fans' mouths. Again, these tickets are not selling, but you can change that. Come find that by giving us a memorable fight. But uh, yeah, man, I'm I'm at a seven. Hopefully, I get a little bit more excited once I touch down in uh, Brooklyn. Hopefully, we get something quite memorable. Again, the lightweight division is the division at this time, so we're we're hoping to 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 get things moving again. It's a it's a good good start to the boxing year. We had an amazing boxing year last year. You know, obviously it with turkey you know taking that driver's seat hopefully we get to see more of these fights but uh yeah uh, on the undercard deal we have our boy arnold barbosa who we thought if ryan were to fall off that driver's seat he could have taken over he's in the co-main event you know obviously hopefully we see him continue to win and move up in those ranks possible opponent for the winner of this fight yeah that's right he is on there but let, let me tell you this look even box rec doesn't even know who's going to be on the undercard <laughs> It's not showing anybody besides the big yeah. Oh, man. Big Bro says Arnold and uh, Crowley, Golden Boy's new signing. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, man. You know what? That's, that's, that's one of the reasons why the tickets don't sell, right, Gio? When, you, when you're when you banking on just your main event to to put seats, man, when it's when it's like this, you, you got to throw in some, some other names in this card again. You know, the Queensberry uh, matchroom card, you see that that's stacked. The card that we had a couple, you know, weeks ago with top rank, that was stacked. So, again, you, you, you're you not Canelo. You you can't just bank on, you know, one main event to, to sell you the fight, especially, especially in New York when it's not your, your, your backyard. Not Canelo. And talking about that, they did announce the, the undercard for the Canelo fight against Munguia. We can talk about it next week. But, um, yeah, man, VMC. Not everybody could be Canelo, man. Canelo settles. No matter who he fights, no matter who's on the undercard. But uh, yeah, man, I think that's all I got for this. We're locking it in, Chris. Devin Haney decision, correct? We're sticking correct. to it. Yeah, decision. Final question, Gio. Yes. What, what percentage are you are you giving Ryan in this okay, fight? Okay, okay. I'm gonna say uh, I'm gonna say twenty five, man. 
You can't count him out. You know, he had some success against Tank. You know, he was getting a yeah. little wild, but hey, sometimes you have to do that. Obviously, I don't think he has the skill of a Tank Davis or of a Devin Haney, so he has to do what he has to do. And, you know, he had some success. He was able to land some good punches. You know, uh, Devin a little more elusive. He moves around the ring a little more. Um, I can see Ryan trying to walk him down. Obviously, Haney doesn't have that power, but... Yeah, I'm going to give him a, a respectable 25% chance against Devin Haney. Okay, I'm going to I'm going to go a little higher. Okay. I'm going to I'm going to say that the antics on social media they're not as I mean they're they're serious, but I think his skills and his power I, I'm going to give him 35% Gio. It's not a whole lot, but it's 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 a good little chunk in where he he could land something and you know, have a chance. But again, uh, Devin Haney just too focused, too boring. Maybe because he's so boring, he's that focused that he's not leaving anything to to chance. Like you said, he doesn't take too many risks, too many chances. He's not going to you know, be on social media uh, talking smack too much. He's just locked in and focused. And in a way, it's obviously it's safe. You know, you, you're just in charge of getting that W. You, forgot, you forget about the entertainment style outside the ring. But yeah, 35% chance to... to to Garcia. It's not bad. It's not bad. Let me let's take a last look at oh uh, that poll before we get into that. Uh, 54 votes, 48% Haney, 52 Garcia now. Ooh, the tides are turning. Tides what, are turning. What's going on? I know we were not we were not promoting Garcia and then the the polls just just started switching. Yeah. He's a popular fighter, so you know, it'd be like that. Be like that. Let, let's take a look at the odds, man. Let's take a look at um, our live reaction here to the odds. What is it looking like? Um, let's go to the first link here. All right. You just have it up on your screens there. Yep. All right. What is it looking like right here? Well, this can't be right. This ain't right. got it. it's, it's something substantially in favor of Devin Haney. Devin That's Haney it. minus 910, Ryan Garcia plus 555, 575. Damn. That can't be right. Yeah, that's, that's that what you saw. see. That's wild. That's so wild. That's what I saw earlier today, Gio. 900 for Devin Haney. And again, it's it's Ryan just not helping his cause. Again, he's so popular. So wow. when he does all these antics, you know, the bookies and 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 the powers behind, you know, the betting sites, they're listening. They're watching. They're like, oh, nah, Look this guy's this not going to win. So, Draft you know, Kings. Okay. Draft... All right, you Chris, know. Chris, Chris. Same applies to you. I'm just kidding. But, hey, Draft Kings minus 800, Ryan Garcia minus 550. Look at that. Wow. Man. That's wild. That's wild. I would, man, I would put some money on Ryan. I would too, but with all the antics, I'm like, yeah, I don't want to just throw my money away. Wow. Yeah, all, the signs, all the signs were there. I'm actually very surprised right now. Wow. Yeah. I, again, these odds, these these are odds where you like straight out know that one guy's <laughs> gonna just win. Again, these are odds that you see, you know, when prospects are coming up and up and coming, and it's it's very very wide for 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 the A side fighter. So. Usually these kinds of fights, Gio, we, we see like what minus four hundred at yeah. worst, minus three hundred and fifty, minus three hundred. So, yeah, the fact that Devin Haney is such a favorite without power, you know, I think I think you gotta, I think I, I think King Wright has a lot to do with that. Yeah, man. And look, let me ask you this: They fought each other six times. They're claiming to be three and three in the amateurs. Will that will that um maybe can that be something in ryan garcia's favor is that gonna matter i mean it was the amateurs it was a long time ago does ryan know something he's fought him six times right well the, the, the quick answer is that that was a different time and 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 i agree with Devin haney i think he's he's since grown at a much uh faster pace than Ryan has on, on the skill side. 
But I, I believe, you know, Ryan still has that confidence where he knows that his power can change the fight at any time. Um, that the fight with Tank, I was I was pretty shocked when he jumped on Tank right away. I was like, oh, dang! Like I was like, he he could he could hurt him. You saw a little a, a little fear in Tank when he you know would would just kind of like power a little bit because you know Ryan is that big and again he does have power. So from what I heard, you know Ryan did jump on him, you know one time in the amateurs and completely like broke him down. From what I hear, so I'm sure that he's he's thinking that the same way he jumped on. On Tank, he could potentially do that and make this fight messy. The messier the fight, the better for, for Ryan Garcia. You don't want to let Devin Haney, you know, employ his boxing style. So, well, maybe, maybe, maybe that's the way. What do you think, Gio? Yeah, I think, I think uh, Ryan can definitely, you know, use some of those experiences to his advantage. But, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. I, I from what I, yeah, from what it sounded like, it seems like, yeah, they're three and three, but maybe Ryan got the best of them in the amateurs. But we'll see, man. Hopefully, we we get something exciting from from Ryan. Otherwise, he's gonna look like a fool. But Chris, that's all I have on that. We've locked in our predictions. We're going decision, Haney. Uh, let's talk about Sebastian Fondora. You were there. You were there in Coachella. You know they had a an honoring you know event for the fundoras the only brother sister championship duo in, in boxing you know sebastian fundora just defeated tim zhu controversial and gabriela fundora um she's been a champion for for a while i think it was last october i was actually there at the at that fight it was at the forum i think that was the the fight where right hook Roxy made a pro debut and Alexis Rocha was defeated by Santillan, if I'm not mistaken. Also, let's go ahead and play this clip right here by Fundora. You were there uh, and then you can give us our thoughts right after. So does Tim Zoo get a rematch down the line? We'll see. We'll see. I, I like it. I like it. Uh, people here in America, now that I have the titles, but... Uh... We'll see what happens. You know, we have big names like Spence. We have big names like Crawford. Those are one of, we are two of the best fighters in the world. You know, the only one missing from that is Canelo, but he's at 168. <laughs> so we're not even worried about that. But, you know, the opportunity is big for us. We'll see, Chris. What do you, what do you take from that? I think it's clear as day. I think he knows that it's not, it doesn't make sense business wise to get in the ring right away with Tim Zoo, even though I feel like, there's mutual respect from both guys. You know, I obviously um Sebastian Fodora knows who Tenzu is. He knows the the lineage that Tenzu comes from with the legendary fighter. So there's a lot of respect between him. But at the same time, and I'm sure it, it it's his manager, you know, talking to him in his ear, like, let's try to capitalize on this win. You know, it's it's he he busted a George Combosos, in my opinion, where you know, not expected to win. You know, everybody, you know, sees you as the underdog. You get called in, you know, eight, nine days notice. You're expected to get, you know, not to be disrespectful, but you're expected to be destroyed. So the fact that you were able to itch out a win, become a world champion, it's it's time to maximize. And, you know, I, I think it's smart. As a Fife fan, you you want to say, no, Tinsel re deserves a rematch. But as, as, a, as a business person, that wants to ensure your family's future, it makes sense to call out a guy like Errol Spence Jr. That's that's my thoughts. What do you think, Gio? What did you think when you when you saw that clip? Yeah, I think I'm gonna agree with a lot of the comments. Uh, doesn't seem like they they want to take that route with Tim, right? They were in a bloody matchup, you know. Forget Tim's used blood, you know. Fundora had blood in his nose and his mouth all fight long. Those came from punches, you know. Does he want to go through that again? against a healthy Tim Zhu, you know, Tim Zhu blinded basically from one side by all that blood, lost a lot of blood, obviously had that gash on top of the head. Uh, he didn't fight like the Tim Zhu that we're used to. So, yeah, I think they're weighing their options. And, you know, I think Spence is probably front runner for that fight because of him. Also, maybe not being 100% yet, you know, him 
coming off a loss. I don't think they fight Crawford. I think the, the bigger money fight is Spence. And Tim Z is probably at the end of the line right now, unfortunately for him. Yeah, again, uh, and this is the question I posed them uh, in that interview. You know, a, a guy like Errol Spence, maybe a year ago, maybe you're not favored against somebody like an Errol Spence. Obviously, the whole boxing world knows what Errol Spence is, what kind of fighter he is. Obviously, post uh, Terrence Crawford, people see him as damaged goods. Uh, I got to ask you, Gio, do you do you favor uh, Fundora against Errol Spence, or do you think Errol Spence still has enough to to, to beat a guy like Fundora? I think I would favor Fundora, man. I don't know if Spence is, is going to be physically ready for that fight. Uh, that's a tough one, but yeah, I think that's a tall order, man. <laughs> For Spence going up against a guy 6'6", you know, who doesn't seem to struggle to make 54, but I don't know. I think, I don't know. This might be the last, just my opinion, this might be the last fight for Spence to cash out. Yeah, no, I completely agree. Again, I agree with you, with what you said. I think you stay, you stay away from a guy like Tinzu. Uh, you stay away from a guy like Terrence Crawford also just because we know how dangerous he is. And you try to capitalize on a guy like Errol Spence that, you know, let's just let's just call it what it is. He's not the same after that fight. He wasn't the same after that accident. So, you know, that's a fight that can sell. That's a fight that could be enticing for, uh, you know, Errol Spence and his team. You know, it's a shot at a belt at 154, the belt at 154 with the WBC and the WBO on the line. Uh, and a guy like, you know, Sebastian Fundora, that's a guy you'd rather face instead of a guy like Tinzu, instead of a rematch with Terrence Crawford. So that that is an enticing fight for, for both men. So, yeah, I I would have to favor Fondora just because of the momentum and just because of that newfound confidence at, of being a world champion. Errol Spence, I would have favored him, you know, 100% once, once upon a time ago. But, man, he's just, it's not the same Errol Spence, man. Yeah, 1,000%. and. Uh... Yeah, that's. I don't have too much else on that. Uh, how's the event overall, Chris? There in Coachella, honoring the Fundora. Oh, it was nice. It was a nice homecoming. All the city officials were there. You know, a lot of kids, a lot of you know, you know, parents of kids that you know aspire the, their kids to one day be, uh, you know, be where Sebastian is. I was able to get in that gym and saw the pictures. There's a lot of pictures of of, of the Diaz brothers, of Jose Luis Castillo, Floyd Mayweather trained there. You know, for many fights. So there's there's a lot of history there, and I'm sure uh, you know the Fundora saw those same champions like went through that gym. So just that homecoming was was a nice thing. Um, you know, obviously we know that uh, the Fundoras they reside now in Bakersfield. It's normal for fighters to try to get away from their hometowns, try to lock in and, and focus. But uh, yeah, again, they were accepted with lots of love. You know, we mentioned they're the only you know brother. Uh, sister duo champions in the world it's it's already hard enough to be a champion on your own so when you have your sibling being a, a world champion you know that that's 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 a pretty big feat so you know they they, they got welcome with uh, uh with open arms and uh and that event you that's cool that's good to see and i feel like he he gave you a lot he gave you a lot uh to me it seems like timmy doesn't get that that rematch but we'll see what happens with that uh before we get out of here i also wanted to mention uh another you know event that happened this past weekend you know not not too much noise around this event rightfully so super boring main event between jared anderson and riyad merhi i mean wow what a snooze fest man i think jared anderson's stock may be going down little by little you know fa jogba was also under there he defeated guido vianello in a a very competitive fight. Uh, Abdullah Mason was also on there. He got a TKO on the fourth. Jalen Walker, he's from the LA area, newly signed to top rank. He got stopped in the seventh against Alejandro Guerrero. I was watching that one. I missed this one. Robson Conte Sal got a TKO in that one. But uh, a decent undercard there, but a super boring um Super boring main event. Uh, um, I'm not big on Anderson, man. I'm going to be straight up. 
Yeah, um, I think he's a, he's a he's a good fighter, but he just I think he's missing missing that X factor. You know, when I think of uh, an Anthony Joshua, who I think he fought in on top break early on before he went back with uh, you know across the pond in the UK. You you saw Joshua like oh this guy's gonna be a star. You you saw that that charisma. You know, obviously you know the 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 faculty that that he has, the skills that he that he possessed. You you almost felt like okay this guy's gonna be a star. Jared Anderson, it just feels like, you know, they're they're trying to build him as the next, the next American heavyweight. Uh, he just he just doesn't do it enough for me. Um, again, he's got some time to, to still grow, but I feel like the momentum train is just it's it's not there. But again, we could be wrong. We'll see what happens. We'll see how they match him up the next couple of fights. But I agree. I didn't know that that fight was was going on. They didn't promote it as heavily. As you would want an American heavyweight, so yeah, uh, not 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 sold on that, Gio. But yeah, just to to cap off a little bit of that Fundora interview, Gio. Obviously, the people that are paying attention to to him are the Australian fans. We saw them drop their comments. They, you know, a lot of them saying that he wants no part of Tin Zoo, and they they might be right in some instances. And it's obviously business business sense for 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 Team Fundora, but. Yeah, it's the Aussies, man. They're 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 letting their voices heard. Yeah, and look, talking about heavyweights, I posted a poll when was this four days ago, uh, asking who is the best heavyweight at the moment. Options: Fury, Usyk, or other. Wow, look what a fight does, man. Obviously, after that and Gano fight, Fury stock going down. Um, Fury only 30%. You see, you can see who I voted for. I voted for Fury. Usyk 51%. Joshua 15%. And then other 4%. So, and I, I know we got some answers too. I think someone said Andy Ruiz. Uh, he hasn't fought in I don't know how how long. Someone said Mike Tyson since he's back in action. <laughs> Jesus, shout out to Jesus. He said nobody. So, uh, there you see it um let's go back to it uh what is it 30 percent fury 51 usik 15 percent joshua uh almost a thousand votes so uh yeah. wow more than 500 people or about 500 people voting for uh usik chris or well, usik again uh obviously you got to put number one and two fury and usik but yeah i'm a little surprised that usik's getting that much love um again I give him some credit because he's a likable guy. Obviously, you know, he's he, him alongside Loma, one of the few fighters like like nobody hates. You know, everybody just just knows, like, you know, just the way they like Triple G. This just an overall great fighter and an overall great person. So, yeah, Fury definitely hurt his stock with that Nganu fight. And I think Joshua doing what he did to Nganu, people were like, yeah, Fury's not that good. But, yeah, obviously... We we will see who the best is when Usyk and Fury get in that ring, and then let it be known. But uh, yeah, definitely Usyk has the um, he's got the he's the people's champion right now in my opinion. And again, uh, you can't hate that guy, man. He's just ultra skilled and can't hate him. Yeah, and and look, another poll talking about Canelo earlier, the Canelo effect. Let's pull up this poll for you guys. Uh, the question was, which fight are you most looking forward to in May? Canelo Munguia. Inoue, Neri, uh, Loma Cambosos, or Fury Usyk. I voted for Fury Usyk, 32% only. Loma Cambosos, 8%. Inoue, Neri, 12%. Wow. And Canelo, Munguia, 48%. The Canelo effect, Chris, 1.3 thousand voters, uh, 48% going with Canelo. Mungia, do you agree with that? Is that the fight that you're more excited for in May? No, nah, definitely not. Um, obviously, like you said, people see Canelo's name and they automatically click it, man. You can have Canelo fight a cactus and they're gonna pick <laughs> it. But uh, yeah, it it, it it definitely has to it has to go to 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 um the other more competitive fights. You know, Usyk and Fury is the one that comes to mind. That that seems like the most competitive fight. Uh, no disrespect to Jaime Mungia, but um. I think Canelo will will handle him, you know, not with ease, but you know what, we'll handle him the way Canelo does uh, to everybody, you know, not name me, whether not name me both. So, um, 
yeah, again, Canelo effect is still showing that he's the he's the face of boxing, still, you know, the king of boxing, still the cash cow. You know, yeah, he's still the man uh to to try to get a fight against. A thousand percent. Let's let's continue going through some of these polls, Chris. I agree with you. Oh, look, uh also news this week. Jaron Ennis Boots signed with Matchroom. Interesting. I don't know if they have too many 147s over there, but that that was uh that was pretty big news. Oof, that's that's big. Again, I mean I, I that's that's a smart move for Boots. Again, we said it throughout this podcast. Turkey is is the guy that you want to be connected with. And obviously we know he's working with these UK based promotions. So super brilliant move, smart move of Boots Ennis to start getting connected up there. And of course, uh Eddie Hearn will promote him. And he's he's done excellent work, you know, inside the ring and then with the media. So I think that's if you're you're trying to buy for a fight, enticing a Terrence Bud Crawford, you know, there's a there's that money there to back uh Boots Ennis up. What do you think about Benavidez being drunk at the fights, Chris? He says, I just want to take this time to apologize to all my fans and to the people that seen me last night drunk. I had one too many drinks, misspelled two, and made a complete fool of myself, shaking my head. This will never happen again. Ever again, he says. So I, I'm a big I'm a big believer in time and place for anything. Um, uh, I, thought you, I'm like, I'm, I thought you were going to say I'm a big believer in drinking. <laughs> hey, I'm. You gotta have fun. Have fun. I think. Um, I think they made a mistake in interviewing him. You see a guy that's you know having fun. He's off the clock. He's there to enjoy a fight. You let him be. Um, you know. Again, they probably felt because he's a fighter and you try to get views on the on the Tubi. You know, they interviewed him, but then I, I feel like he shouldn't have to apologize. I mean, but obviously that's the classy move to say. Apologize to the fans. You know, obviously. You know, he didn't look the, his, his best stuff when you're inebriated. So I see him doing that. I personally would tell him, you don't have to apologize. You're there to have fun. You know, you're not, you know, you're not on the undercard. You're not fighting. You're just there to have fun. I think people deserve to, to, to be, to be human. I'm 50, what do you think, Joe? I'm 50-50 about it, too. I agree. He's not on the clock, you know, you can say. But, man, you're trying to earn the biggest payday of your career. <laughs> Like you, man, how many times is this guy going to just, you know, do things that make you scratch your head? You know, the positive cocaine test, the missing weight, drunk in public, interviewing at the fights. You know, I, I don't know. I'm sure that plays against him. But, yeah, I think he should be able to have some drinks, too. Just respectfully decline the interview you know you don't have to you don't have to speak to the people but nah, i didn't make too much of it i just thought it was funny that he apologized yeah that was funny to me like i get it like you're off the clock but but are you really off the clock at the same time again you're, you go to a boxing fight everybody's gonna want to talk to you you're david to be this everybody's gonna want to talk to you embrace especially it. when embrace it especially embrace it you act like we don't know that you do or used to do cocaine you know embrace <laughs> it don't oh i'm sorry guys that i was drinking dude we know you've done worse shit like it's not that big of a deal embrace it or or i don't know i, I i'm not a big fan of apologies but hey yeah. maybe someone was in his ear telling him to do that yeah, to me that's a that's a PR move, and I, I get. It. I mean, people are gonna eat it up. They're gonna be like, "Hey, you know, man, you're you're allowed to have fun." Uh, you know, I, I, I would have been like, "Hey, guys, you know what? I'm human too. I'm allowed to have fun." You know, no, no, no shots at you know them interviewing me. You know, every other time I do interviews, you know me, but uh, I would have been like, "Hey, I'm allowed to have fun too." You know, next time I'll, I'll respectfully decline uh, the interview. But yeah, it is what it is. Again. I, I like David. I know you're not a huge fan of of of, of David Gio, but I got that little bias, you know, <laughs> with with David and Abidas. I do like him, and I hope he gets a fight with Canelo soon. Uh, I think that, that that would be a great fight down the line. And man, make that fight in Saudi Arabia. Throw these these boys their money. Hey, I think Canelo deserves a nice cash out. You know, once 
once he leaves the sport because yeah again he's he's been the most important fighter of the last 10 years all right chris, all right chris look let me tell you this benavides i used to like him i used to like him a lot i just think what the the stuff that he's doing nowadays is just corny you know begging for a payday you know begging for canelo and in every, in every interview like i think it got old to me um him fighting guys like lemieux it's like why are you fighting guys like lemieux when you're trying to get a canelo fight and you know now he's fighting volstick like well, come on man why are you fighting retired boxers that makes zero sense but you know big bro makes a good point the fight is in two months and he's out here getting drunk so you know we we know how seriously they're taking that fight you know he's fighting a 47 year old volstick let's see he should get a knockout i mean straight up you know but El Pachuco also says Benavides got drunk off that VMC, the VMC Canelo drinks, you know, but you know, I don't want to spend too much time on this, man. But yeah, I'm, I used to like Benavides a lot. Now, as people say with Devin Haney, it's hard to like him, man. It's hard to be on his side all the time when you're doing this handout. Please, Canelo, fight me. You know, he's never been the mandatory, by the way. That's still people on the Internet keep saying that he's never been the mandatory. For, for the WBC, but hey, you go to 75, get, there's someone right on your ass, man. Morel said, I'm moving up to 75 too. You know, stop avoiding that, man. I, I thought you would have been a fan of him too after he took out your boy Boo Boo, you know, the guy that's been avoided every every guy throughout their whole career. I thought you would have been like, okay, David, I, I see you. Nope, nada. I'm going to quote the great Saul Alvarez. and. Horrible fighter, man. <laughs> Horrible fighter. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> yeah. Again, um, hey, slide him up. <laughs> Again, uh, I agree that Bolstick is not the same fighter he once was, and I mean, I mean, this won't get the same credit, but um, alongside Shakur, I, in my opinion, David is one of the, the most awarded fighters. Alongside Shakur, alongside um, uh, the middleweight, uh, I'm I'm spacing out on his name. Billy, oh uh, Johnny Beck, Johnny Beck. Along the, along those guys, on. he's probably the most avoided. The only one Man, that he, look. Let me tell you. That, that, go ahead, go ahead. I was gonna say the only one that he that he's not purposely fighting is Morel, but I think. Then how are you the most? Hey, let me tell you this. How many guys are saying Subiel Matias' name? True. None there of those go. guys. Morel is on Benavides' ass. Yeah, tell him I want one. that fight. Ain't nobody beg. Ain't nobody a after Subiel Matias like that. Ain't nobody after better BF like that. I'm there we saying. go. <laughs> All right, there you go. <laughs> Matias number one. Better be number two. Uh, the middleweight number three. Four because he lulls everybody to sleep. And then gonna be this, in my opinion. But he, he he's not fighting Morel because I I. I think he sees them as green like dude you you're where i was at you gotta win some fights so but morel is definitely a dangerous fighter for hey any that division we might have to put boots in that conversation soon <clears throat> crawford wants no part of that <laughs> crawford went up a whole division he said i'm not fighting spence at 54 as soon as boots was on his ass he said you know what i'm, I'm gonna go to 54 <laughs> let's go try to fight let's go try to fight Pundora. <laughs> Boots is good, but let's put let's put some respect on on on, on and Terrence Bud. Terrence Bud would destroy Boots and it's straight up. Maybe, but he ain't fighting them. I don't think Boots has done enough to to earn that fight, but I mean, mm -hmm. we'll see what happens. I, I want to be against it if, hey, they, if they were to sign that fight next. That would work if you're a guy like Canelo. Crawford fought the Mean Machine for no reason. He fought Kell Brook for no reason. He fought Amir Khan for no reason. He didn't have to. They weren't mandatory. They were nothing. He just fought him for no reason. <laughs> see, you just you just brought up a nice fight. I want to see Boot Dennis against Mean Machine. That's a good one, like to see That's where he's at. Fight. That's a great fight. It's a good fight. Geo Geo for matchmaker. Let's go. <laughs> All right. Let's see. Shakur ahead of Benavidez boots too, says Big Bro. All right. Hey, I got another poll for you. Look at this poll right here. Your boy, man. Let's give your boy some shine, man. You love this guy, Pitbull Cruz. Who, Let's go. 
<laughs> Look how excited Chris gets. Look, who who would you like to see Pitbull Cruise fight next is the question. Uh, options are the tank rematch, Ryan Garcia at 140 with the money back sign. Uh, so Matias, 140 pound unification or Shakur for a belt at 135. 42%, you know, out of the thousand voters still want to see that rematch with Gervonta. 42%. 14% says, Ryan, that's the one I picked. Get your money. Stay away from the other 140s. Um, 32, surprisingly, Subriel Matias. And 11%, Shakur. A lot of people commenting on this one, too. Let's see what they're saying. Let's see what the people are saying. Mexico, Puerto Rico. Honestly, they should give Abuelo a chance. That's uh, Barroso. <laughs> Any of the belt. Hell, uh, belt holders at 140 should get Barrocho a, a shot next. He's a dangerous fighter, man. Yeah, I better be careful. You might have to line up Ryan against him next. If Ryan ain't going to get any of the champions, let me tell you that much. Tank wouldn't dare. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's Who would you like to see him? Who would you like to see him fight next? Pitbull, that's your boy. Would I, love? I mean, I've already seen him with Gervonta, and that was an exciting thing. Even though I feel like it would be a great, great match, and it would be a little bit closer because he's a champ now. He's got that that newfound confidence. That would be great. But I've already seen that one. So the one where I'm like licking my chops, and that would be a a little fearful for him. But at the same time, I feel like he also has the fundamentals to hurt him. And this would be a fight of the year. Would be Subrad Matia. That one, take my money. That one, I would say it 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 would excite me the way um better beef and be bold excite me like in terms of action maybe not the same kind of you know mystique to you know pound for pound you know greatness but just action fight gaddy fight you know those, those castillo you know kind of fight and chico corrales kind of fights it it, it excites me on that level and again, Matias is a dangerous, dangerous, dangerous fighter. But so, so is uh, people Cruz. You know, obviously limited fighter in in Rollies, but dude, he he brought that power with them. So, yeah, I I, I want to say some real Matias, man. Take my money, give me fight of the year type of fight. That's the one I will pick. In my opinion, he 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 knocks out Ryan Garcia. I agree that that's wow. the money back for him. That makes sense business wise. That's the one that makes sense, but. Me as an as a fight fan, action fighter that I want to see, I would pick Matias versus Pepe Cruz. Wow. What, what do you think? Uh, stay away from Surreal, man. Stay away. <laughs> stay away. I'd rather him fight Tank again. Even though I think he loses again. But anyway, last poll here. I'm not sure we've showed this one here. Um, do, do you think the fight should have been stopped between Tim Zhu and Fundora? 70% uh, say yes. 30% said no. 824 votes i think the mass vast majority of people uh were wondering why they let that fight continue yeah i i initially thought that that fight was gonna get stopped i thought that the powers would that be would not let tim zoo lose the belts in in the fashion in which he lost him you know i, I think it was it was an accident you know, elbow. I think Tim kind of like you know he ran to that elbow, and then that blood was just gushing. Uh, and I, I thought it, it should have been stopped. I thought the medical team, the doctors, uh, I think they they fumbled that move right there as trained professionals. It shouldn't have gone. You know, the distance should have been a no contest. They should have rescheduled it. You know, for three four months from from then. But um, it makes things interesting um, for boxing. You know, the fact that. You know, that Tim Zhu now has a one loss. He lost that streak. It makes him look a little bit more more human. I was one of those people that thought he was going to go on a Triple G run and not lose until much later. Um, so this makes things interesting. I think it it, re, it kind of plants that hunger even more for Tim Zhu to reclaim this title. So, yeah, again, um, should have been stopped, but it wasn't. But, yeah, well, what, are, what are your thoughts to you? Oh, yeah, a thousand percent. They should have done the smart thing, but they were too brave for their own good. So well, we'll see. We'll see. Hopefully he gets he gets another big opportunity. Uh, I think he earned it. 
but unfortunately there's a uh, other money makers man other other money makers there who have come up from 147 to 154 but look man that's all i got that's all i got man we'll be back next week next tuesday uh breaking down that devin haney ryan garcia fight and that undercard uh we also have as some of the people here in the comments uh mentioned uh jose ramirez on the 27th along with virgil ortiz and then may is when the big names man the big names the biggest of them all canelo's fighting on loma on the 11th fighting Cambosos. Uh, the 18th, uh, we're getting Fury, Usyk, I think. Navarrete is also fighting in that San Diego card. Our good friend, Kid Kansas, Alan Garcia. Alan Garcia is going to be on the undercard as well. Um, and then, uh, can't forget Inoue as well on the 6th. Um, what is that, uh, Monday, Tuesday? Probably a Tuesday for us, huh? Inoue Neri also in May, so... <sighs> We're going to have a lot to discuss in the upcoming weeks, Chris. Yeah. Again, uh, April 20th, this is, you know, it's fight week, Ryan versus Devin Haney. I'm, I'm seeing this as an appetizer, Gio. I'm not going to get my expectations too high nor too low, just right in that 6 7. So, yeah. Again, we'll see what happens. Appetizer for what is May. You know, obviously, you mentioned the, the face of boxing. We got the pound for pound number one in, in, in the way. You know, I, in my opinion, one of the most exciting fighters in in the actuality of, of boxing. So, dude, I'm excited for May Usyk Fury. Man, let's get it going. Let's go. I'm excited. Last comment here. Uh, Big Bro says Matias puts him in the hospital. Talking about Cruz. Cruz has no chance. Too small. Too reckless. Too predictable. And I agree. Stop. <laughs> Y'all, y'all disrespecting my my pit bull, man. The Come on, Krillin, I guess I have some respect. The Krillin of boxing, Chris. The, Krillin, the Vegeta. <laughs> the Come on, Krillin man. Krillin of the boxing. Krillin. <laughs> nah, he Rollies is probably the 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 Yamcha now. <laughs> a box. Now we gotta put some respect on pit bull, man. Again, he's a little guy, but he packs a punch. Dangerous fighter. <laughs> oh, here we go. Uh, again, I. <laughs> I knew he could hurt Rollies. I didn't think he could make him do that stinky leg the way he did. So <laughs> I even though Matias has a better chin, I think he has enough to hurt him. But again, Matias, these the, both of these guys, man, are, are 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 dogs. Both of these guys have that that mental ferocity that makes it for a fight of the year. So dangerous fight for both guys, in my opinion. Yeah, I gotta give people a little bit more credit. <laughs> You know, I, I think you guys don't. I think you guys underestimate him. He keeps proving you guys wrong. So I'm gonna just leave it at that. Hopefully they sign that, and you know, we we get a fight of the year. But yeah, all those fights that you put on the pole, Gio, like Cruz, you're excited for all those fights. Maybe not Shakur because of his style, but all the other ones, man, they're exciting in my opinion. All right, let's go ahead and check the results. That was the poster right there for Better BF versus Bevel. Let's go ahead and check what the results are looking like now for that Ryan Garcia poll before we get out of here. 109 votes in one hour, 51% Haney, 49% Ryan Garcia. Yeah. It's a lot closer than the bookies have it. It's a go, yeah, definitely a lot closer. Again, Joe, it's it's not gonna be no minus nine hundred fight unless unless Devin busts another Ruguru type of fight, but I don't I don't think so. Again, um, we, we must remember that Ryan is gonna be much more comfortable at this weight. You know, they 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 busted a, a Mayweather Canelo with the fight against Tank where they dehydrated him, and then there was that talk about that you know he had a he was damaged to the body. But uh, I, I feel, in my opinion, physically, he's going to be a lot better. Mentally, he's going to be a lot worse. But, I mean, it's it's. we'll see, man. We'll see what happens. All right. We shall see, man. Thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for keeping that chat lit. Shout out to all you guys who were here live. 
on the live chat. Shout out to you guys who will be watching the replay as well. We're going with Haney once again. Decision. Hopefully, it's not a boring fight. We'll be back next Tuesday to break it all down. Be sure to sub Gio. if you're new to the channel. Yeah, go ahead. What 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 would you do if if if, if Devin Haney knocks out Ryan Garcia? Wow. I will give him a standing ovation. You, you gotta you gotta you gotta wear a Devin Haney shirt or or something. Yeah, I can make a little Devin Haney face and he he can be part of the pod. We have a Canelo face, we have a triple okay. face, and we have a Crawford face. We can introduce Haney and you know, I should maybe if Pitbull gets gets it on with one of the top one forties, I'll I'll bring Pitbull's face too on onto the pod. I know you would love that idea. I like that. I like that. All right. I'm with it. I'm with it. David Haney gets a knockout. He gets a face on ATR. <laughs> there you have it, man. All right. Anything else you want to add before we get out of here, Chris? No, again, just uh I'm I'm excited to tune in uh for this fight. I'm excited to be there. Uh, and share our board on our Barbosa Jr. We we did say like you know with all the antics that uh, Ryan was doing, you know this this event was still always gonna go because Arnold was ready to step in. So yeah, again he just gotta keep on winning and hopefully gets a opportunity there, you know, with the winner. So shout out to our board Arnold. You know it's it's nice to see him finally get up there uh, with those big names. Yeah, shout out to ABJ be in action as well. But yeah, that's it for us, mates. We'll be back soon. Thank you guys very much. Shout out to Turkey. I know you're watching. Hello, Turkey. Let's go. Let's go, mates. BMC. BMC. SME Sebas. Let's go. Let's go, mate. Hola amigos, estoy con Francisco Sol Gallo Estrada, quiero, man quiero mandar un saludo para mis amigos de Contra las Cuerdas, que se le muchas ganas, un abrazo, muchas gracias. Shout out to Against the Ropes, you know what my, mine is, let's box bitches, it's almost fight night! Shout out to Against the Ropes, thank you for the support, keep doing your thing, you're doing, you're doing a great job, so thank you and best wishes. Huge, huge, huge shout out to Against the Ropes. Against the Ropes. Shout out to Against the Ropes. Thank you guys for uh, the interview and uh, hope to see you guys right soon. Against the Ropes, always doing the right thing. Uh, shout out to Against the Ropes, man. I appreciate you guys for having me, taking the time on Charlie. Against the Ropes, number one. Freddie Roach. Thank you very much.